Okay, okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome here to uh, Tuesday, February the 20th, 2024, the day after President's Day. Did you get a new mattress? Um, Americans apparently buy more mattresses on Monday. February the 19th, I guess, this year, uh, President's Day. Uh, there's, you know, it's the day to get a new mattress. I, I, I had no idea. Uh, welcome, one and all, to the uh, <laughs> to the program. Um, nice to see you all here today. Uh, we seem to have a little bit of red to start the morning today. Uh, nothing incredibly bad, but uh, 139 drop on the Dow, which is a third of a point. Uh, S and P down about 0.38, uh, 19 points, and and uh, Nasdaq's off 81 points, which is not quite half a percent in the pre market. Good morning to all of you. A uh, 19 cent drop on a barrel of oil at 79 79 dollars a barrel. It's trying to get to 80 again. And uh, I read a very interesting article this weekend about uh, the illegal the Ill- illegal sale of Russian oil, how it's done, and all of these holding companies and offshore blind trusts and all kinds of shenanigans going on uh, with uh, companies registered in various places that uh, the U.S. Justice Department can't get their hands on or whatever. and It's just a a whole world of activity, the most interesting. The buyers are China and India, by the way. If you want to know who ultimately buys this stuff, who buys Russian oil, Uh, Russia tries to produce... They used to produce 10 million barrels a day at the height of their production. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, with sanctions and whatnot, it's cut into it, but uh, they're still getting a ton of oil out. And uh, well, apparently the biggest buyers are India um, and uh, China. So uh, you buy, you buy Chinese made goods uh, wherever you live, um, you're supporting the Chinese government, uh, communist government, which of course jails people for thinking about freedom. You know, just you know, just to kind of clarify that little thing, uh, you support those people by buying Chinese-made stuff, and uh, uh, these guys are buying uh, oil from Russia at a deep discount to the world price because of the shenanigans. Uh, which allows Russia the capital it needs to uh, function as an entity and um, uh, invade a country like Ukraine and and kill Ukrainians. And so you buy a spatula from China, you're killing Ukrainians. Put it together. That's all I'm saying. Uh, (laughs) It's a little more complicated than that. Okay, Uh, fair enough. Um, But... um, what can I say? Um, we have what we have. We see what we see. Uh, tough times in China. Holy moly, are, are, are some really depressing economic stats coming out of that country from more than one source. Um, you know, not only is it bad in real estate over there, but uh, youth unemployment, which we've talked about, factory utilization numbers are down, exports are down, imports are down. This, th- that economy is in trouble, real trouble. Um, that, of course, is spilling into uh, the neighbors um, of China. It's also uh, causing huge problems in Europe because Europe is very dependent on uh, expo- exports into China. Um, uh, all the big high fashion brands, automotive brands, watch people, jewelry, you name China is uh, really backing off when it comes to the demand factor of high-end stuff from Europe. Um, and so that's hurting European economies. Um, there are, the export market out of Europe is a bit of an issue. Uh, I read something else about uh, high-end commercial um, um, condominium sales and, and, and you know mansions and stuff. The high-end housing of Hong Kong is off as much as 25% this year from last year in price uh even you know uh, higher rates have not helped but a slowing economy and the brain drain uh that is a big story uh, making the rounds out of shanghai out of uh, hong kong of course and other uh, chinese areas uh, there are a lot of folks who are uh, who are able to find work um, 
elsewhere or whatever they they are um and foreigners leaving uh, china is is at a record high like like expats getting out uh, simple uh simple reason um you could be accused of being a spy by just being a an analyst of of market trends uh, you, you do not want to be an employee in china you just don't want you know, if your boss is offering you a position to hey how would you like to be a senior vp of uh you know shipping logistics and blah blah market study and stuff in based in shanghai you'll say you should say ah, thanks but no thanks how about singapore how about i'll go there um i don't think i want to be in china doing that kind of work because i could be la- i could be labeled uh, um, with crimes under the espionage act i don't think i want to do that um don't really want to be you know someone that gets traded for someone else 10 years from now after solitary confinement. I don't think I want to play that game. A couple of Canadian diplomats have already paid the price on that. Um, and uh, Canada gave up some some chick who uh, was the daughter of some senior telephone outfit. And she was held in, in uh, Vancouver under arrest of she had a, an ankle bracelet, and she stayed in one of her mansions in Vancouver for three years while, while two Canadian former diplomats were charged with treason and espionage. Well, not treason, espionage. In solitary confinement in China, <clears throat> they wouldn't even let the um, ambassador and the uh, embassy staff of Canada visit these guys for a while. And um, China was just saying, well, we're just following the laws of China. And Canada's going, well, we're following the laws of Canada. And she can stay in her mansion here in Vancouver, and Chinese called that outrageous, oh, that cruel and unusual punishment. Those, those, those Gucci heels of hers are hardly looking good with that ankle bracelet around. Yeah, am I a fan of China? Not really. I, I, you might, you might, you might get the vibe on that. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of you know that game. But in any event, um, boy, I tell you, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the program this morning. It's great to have you here. Uh, enough Chan- China ranting for one day. Uh, what's going on in, in the, the world at large and the markets? My goodness, uh, the United States keeps coming up with really good results, like really good economic results, which is reflective probably of the fact that the greatest president of all time, well, no, the 14th greatest president of all time is now leading the United States. Apparently, there was a, a, a some kind of a historian, uh, presidential historian society or something like that coming out with ratings. And I guess they do this all the time. <clears throat> and they rated from best to worst, the, the best and worst presidents of the United States over all the time. And number one was Lincoln and <clears throat> George Washington is up there and Roosevelt is up there and uh, Biden number 14. Um, Obama was like number seven or something like that. Um, I think it's because of lack of arrests of, 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 of cabinet members and senior White House staff. Uh, you know, if you can't, if you can't step up to the plate and get all kinds of your advisors put in jail as an ex-president, you, you just said, don't know what's going on. And well, they acknowledged Orange Boy by saying the worst president of all time orange boy um and uh the republicans weren't very happy about that poll they they, they didn't like the results but um anyway the united states economy is is the strongest of the western world at the moment the strongest of the g20 the g8 the g7 what however you want to measure it i mean the u.s economy is kicking the butt of everybody else recession is happening in germany their economy is shrinking britain UK shrinking economy. Japan just entered recession last month. That's official now. Six months of depreciation, you know, shrinking. China, of course, uh, shrinkage. Um, and others, uh, just all kinds of countries are barely growing or hanging on. Now, Canada's growing um, because we're neighbors with our friends. Mexico is growing. So the, the NAFTA, the, the, the free trade deal between our three countries is really working well overall for the three countries uh we are trading between each other like crazy and it's really working we do not have mass unemployment we do not have um, uh, long food lines uh great depression era 
Is it perfect? No. Uh, is America perfect? No. Is Canada perfect? No. Uh, but it is better than other G by a long shot. The difference, of course, and this is this is where you know freedom reigns and socialism is out there and whatever. Germans who get laid off don't lose their houses. Um, Canadians who get laid off can get unemployment, but some Canadians run into financial troubles. The Brits, uh, there's social programs to help, but not everybody. Japan, we don't. I don't know Japan's social system like like you know like North America, but you don't see uh, stories out of Japan where there are food lineups in every city and town in Japan because there's a recession. You, you don't see it. What you unfortunately find in the United States is in the USA, it's black or white. It's either you are successful or you're not. You're either making it or you ain't making it. And in a place like New York City, I was introduced to the difference between winning and losing by just walking down the street in New York City whether you're on Madison Avenue, Park Avenue, Third Street, or 42nd Street, it didn't matter. You would walk along and pass a uh, pass a beautiful uh, storefront with high-end clothing or jewelry or whatever they were doing in there. And, and, and here's a bank over here, an insurance company there, a travel agency there, and then you'd pass a couple of buildings where in the uh, in the entryway are people in sleeping bags and under cardboard boxes the homeless and it would just be shocking because you, you you'd see people walking on the sidewalk that were doing rather well and then you'd see these folks and neither party paid attention to the other there was no shock shock for the visitor couldn't believe what i was looking at but for the regulars another day in manhattan it's black and white it is up or down win or lose and there is no middle ground and that's Kind of what shocked me about the U.S. So, wow, boy, you can be on top of the world, and next thing you know, you can be out, and it and it's accepted. It, it's just part of the the system. It's amazing to me. It really, it really is. still still blows my mind. But in any event, what can I say? Um, I can't. Uh, I can't help. It. Now, what else is going on? Uh, welcome all to the show. Welcome all to the program. Welcome all to the channel today it's great to have you here we have a big week this week for for nvidia yeah, this is nvidia week wednesday after the bell i believe nvidia releases the results we'll find out on you know thursday uh how it worked out uh, obviously we'll know wednesday night with the results um, coming out how the stock does wednesday evening in the pre in the aftermarket and then thursday morning pre-market and then we start trading on thursday regular hour we are told uh, the, 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 the word the word is that the stock could go up 11 percent, could go down 11 percent or something in the middle it could literally do nothing um the company i believe uh i, I know they're going to do very good results that that's a that's a given compared to a year ago to where they are now yes of course their sales are going to be much higher the question is will it be good enough to satisfy the analysts who have been putting out their opinion on, you know, how the company will do. And what I fear, unfortunately, and it's becoming more obvious as you are probably noticing with more and more stocks out there, the, uh, the term, there's, a, there's an expression out there called priced to perfection. And that means um, certain stocks or, or, or commodities like a barrel of oil or, or uh, interest rates, uh, inflation expectations, unemployment expectations. The analysts out there and followers of, of, of all these trends, they will say about a stock that a stock is priced to a perfect uh, result that is expected from the company. And sometimes the corporations come out and say, we earned uh, so many dollars a share, you know, we earned this much a share in profit. And the street's going, that's exactly what we were looking for. And then the company goes on to say, our gross sales were this many, this many dollars for the latest quarter. The street goes, that's exactly what we expected you to release. Um, we, uh, we're going to up our guidance uh, for the next quarter. 
oh, that's exactly what we're going to do. What's your expectation? We believe we're going to be 5% better off next quarter than a year ago. Quarter. And the street goes, we thought it would be 5.1%. Kill that stock. And the stock drops 15% in value because their earnings estimates and their expectations aren't meeting the street's expectations. You can be off by one one hundredth of a percent and blow it. Uh, there is no mercy of, uh, of that. But this, again, will sh if, this sh if you see this, and you're seeing it many times nowadays on many different stocks where they are lower in the pre-market, lower in the aftermarket, after earning reports, after earning what they were supposed to earn, you give the wrong impression of the future to, to these, these analysts who have no stake in the game, by the way. They don't own a single share of these companies, okay? They don't have any skin in the game. They are employed by Wall Street guys, or they're not. They're, they're, they're just single individual um, for hire type analysts, or they're running a blog, a vlog, on a YouTube channel, and they're just trying to get eyeballs to follow them. They have no skin in the game on the company stock or the future of the company, and they just make an outlandish guesstimate as to what they think the company should do for the next three months. They'll never talk to the CEO and vice versa. They'll, they don't have any insider kind of contacts, really. And they're coming up with these so-called expert opinions. And the market, unfortunately, the stock market, many people in the market follow these so-called gurus as experts and believe everything they say, uh, rightly or wrongly. And sometimes they're right and they uncover a gem and, and they do well with it. Uh, but other times they're long into a deal and these analysts uh, submarine these people by saying uh, they're, they're missing estimates or they're, you know, their future looks a little shaky or whatever, and stocks take a hit. The problem with NVIDIA, for example, if the stock drops 10% in value, goes down 10%, you're talking $100 billion of wealth that just went, <laughs> you're talking about a trillion dollar company. You're talking about Apple, $3 trillion company, it drops 10%, that's $300 billion of value that just <laughs> disappeared. That's how powerful these guys are. And yet they have no skin in the game and they shouldn't be followed by anybody. <laughs> Their advice should not be taken as gospel. The problem is that, as I said, a stock is priced to perfection. And what you have here is in the case of NVIDIA today is that there are millions and millions of people out there who are not institutional investors. They're retail investors. So they have a hundred bucks to a hundred thousand bucks of their money into the stock generally speaking, some many, many more than that, but most of them are under hundred grand each. And these are the folks, some of these folks, not all, but some of these folks are, are nervous Nellies. They're like a, they're like a thoroughbred horse, something happening will make them jittery. And they're also over leveraged. And there's the problem right there. If 10% of all the players of NVIDIA are margin players where they've bought, they put money in their account, or asset value in their account. They bought up NVIDIA on credit. They ran it up as high as they can go. And what they need, what they must now get is an 11% jump in the price of the stock that will make them 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 in profit, maybe even 100,000 in profit. These are the folks who are the ones who are the jitter, the most jittery because the, everything they have is on the line on this quarterly thing. They shouldn't be on the line. They shouldn't be doing this, but they do. They're long option contracts. They're long puts. They're long calls. They're they're short the stock or they're long the stock. It, they, it can be either direction. Half of them are right. Half of them are wrong. Uh, they'll all be wrong. The stock doesn't move at all. Um, we're going to find out. What I ask myself is, okay, okay, self, uh, I ask, hey, look, uh, the NVIDIA stock, everyone knows that Wednesday they're coming up with their numbers. So... Shouldn't everyone have already made their move into their into that investment? You bought the stock, you shorted the stock, you bought calls, you bought puts. I mean, you know, did, if you're a long player one way or the other, you're in. But what I wonder now is, well, who are you going to make money from after the earnings come out? Like, 
why should the stock go up 11%? Who's going to pay 11% more for NVIDIA after you bought it? Like you love it and you're, you're a fan and you're convinced that this is the, this is the dealio of all dealios. God bless NVIDIA. They're making more money. They'll announce maybe a larger stock buyback number. You know, they'll announce all kinds of great stuff. And you're going, yes, I thought that's what they were going to do. Who's going to buy your stock from you and why? Why wouldn't smart money buy before you even buy? This is what I wonder about. Where does this, this move come from? I can understand the down dip panic. I can see disappointment. I can see, oh, yeah, gee, they... They were supposed to make, uh, you know, $8.38 a share profit. They only made $8.18 a share profit. That's 20, 20 cents below estimates. Oh, yeah, dump this stuff. Uh, I can see that knee-jerk reaction happen because, again, speculators on credit. <laughs> speculators on credit don't panic sell when it goes up. Speculators using credit panic sell when stocks go down because they're using the stock as credit to hold the stock in the first place. So the, the pyramid is getting wobbly up here. Sure, the stock can go down. I can see NVIDIA going up 50 bucks a share in the first day or two of fantastic results. But then I can see disappointment in the fact that it didn't go up 150 bucks a share. And people now are getting upset and they're getting frustrated and there are those out there on margin and with every, all kinds of other debt problems who were supposed to make 150,000 profit on this trade and only made 40,000 profit on the trade and are reluctant to sell to take the 40 because that would be an admission of defeat you see and then it starts the, the, the selling comes in because the next wave of buying doesn't show up to take it to 150 higher than it was supposed to be it wasn't ever going to go there and so here we go. We now we're down 50 bucks a share, which creates a sell wave of people getting out because they're getting kicked out of the position. I mean, you won. The company made a lot more money than last year, set new sales records, threw out all kinds of projections of greatness. Everything is there for you. And yet it wasn't enough. And so you have this problem. Of course, around here, if you're watching me on this channel live with this radio face, you're here for something completely different. Uh, like we say in the, uh, at uh, at uh, uh, with the with the gang from the UK now for something completely different. Uh, Monty Python knows that well. If you're not going to make money going long, you're not going to make money going short by being long puts or whatever. Maybe, maybe there's another way to play NVIDIA. And around here, there is another way to play the NVIDIA trade. And that is credit spreads using options. Just do it that way. And why don't you, why wouldn't you want to be a, an investor looking for a return on the hottest stock on the stock market, NVIDIA, the hottest number one talked about stock today. Okay, they, they, they change from time to time, but right now it's all about NVIDIA. Well, why don't you uh, gamble on NVIDIA by writing credit spreads on, on calls or puts? And you're a fan of the company. You love these guys. And you, you believe that in the next year, the stock's going to be over $1,000 a share. You, you just convinced it's going to get there. Well, the way to play it then is to be a, a, a player of uh, credit spreads on puts. You want your puts to go to nothing. You want them to go to zero. And if you believe the stock is an uptick, candidate it's going to just going to go higher it will fluctuate of course it fluctuates but long term three months six months nine months a year two years it's just going to go higher it's just going to go higher it's going to go higher you're going to you're going to write credit spreads using put contracts and you're going to get a you're going to get a credit in your account and the objective is simple either time will bring those contracts to nothing and you keep all the credit money or time and stock movement going higher will make you the will make you the home run. Obviously, if the shares rise from seven, you know, where are they now? Seven seventeen or down eight bucks, 
they go from 717, 720 to 775 by the end of this week. And you've put out there a 600, uh, 620 dollar put contract or a 630 put that you've written the 610 you've bought or something like that way behind the stock you're looking for those contracts to be even further out of the money by the end of the week that that's your that's your that's your whole plan go back to ghostbusters what 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 was your plan get her that was your whole plan get her yeah the whole plan was get nvidia credit spreads on the put side get her and if you can bring three, four dollars in credit in on a twenty dollars spread between the put you write and the put you buy, there's classes available for all this. By the way, for those of you going, what's he talking about? Um, you're going to sit there and go, yeah, look, uh, this stock uh, stays where it is, goes up ten, fifteen dollars next week or two, goes up a hundred dollars in the next week. Oh, great! The higher this thing goes, the the more of that four hundred dollars of credit that I got, I keep. And that's on one contract, one set of contracts. Now you got twenty grand lying around. You can't afford to buy a hundred shares of this stuff. It's seventy-one thousand seven hundred dollars to buy a hundred shares. But you got twenty thousand bucks. You could write ten credit spreads on, uh, put credit spreads on Nvidia, bring in about four grand in cash, and uh, stock goes up thirty, forty, fifty bucks a week or two from now. And and that is saying a lot because we're talking about a contract that dies in one month we have less than 30 days of life in this contract uh that contract's value is going to shrink in the two weeks anyway to, from time shrinkage but 40 50 70 dollars out of the money further out oh these contracts are going to get swacked which is exactly what you're looking for you're going to see that spread go down from four to maybe a buck buck and a half 75 cents you're going to close out that spread in a week or two what are you going to do now? You're going to write another one. You're going to write the April spread now. Third Friday of April, you're going to do another put credit spread, maybe 640s and 620s or 660s and 640s. You're just following the stock. As it keeps going, your puts are down here. And you're just tracking it. You're just tracking it as it goes. You're just tracking it, taking the spread, taking the spread, taking the spread. Is it really sexy and exciting like buying 10,000 shares this morning for 717 and selling them for 737 this afternoon? No. How many of my viewers can buy $700,000 of this stuff and make a quick 20 grand on it? Hold your hand up. There, there's there's not there's crickets out here, okay? Uh, none of my viewers can buy a hundred thousand of this stuff and flip it for a couple of bucks today. I don't have those viewers. They don't need to watch this face for those kinds of trades. They're going to talk to me. They have professionals handling their trades in New York. Good luck to them, by the way. Um, no, you're going to sit there and go, no, Bruce, look, I, I'm happy to take uh, $3 off the table on this deal for two bucks, two fifty off the table. If I can bring out two to two and a half, three grand every time I, I take money off of 10 cash secured put contracts at a time, uh, 10 of these trades. Uh, I'll do this again and again and again. Now, if I can take off two or three grand every week to 10 days on the volatility of this stock, uh, hey, man, 2,500 every, uh, every 10 days, that's 7,500 a month. For most of you, you're not working for anybody if you're making 7,500 a month profit in the market around. I mean, why would you have a job if you're making 90000 a year trading these contracts? You're not working for anybody. You're living off of forty, fifty thousand 50000 of that ninety, and the rest you're still throwing back in here to write 12 at a time, 14 at a time, 18 at a time, 20. And now you're making 15000 a month, 20000 a month. Well, of course. There are some of you out there who are going to write 20 cash-secured puts on this deal. You may have done it already. And you're sitting on uh, on eight thousand bucks in credit up front in your account. Your your stake plus eight grand is in your account right now. You're earning interest on in all that dough. Then you're sitting here going, "I dare you to come down here to six hundred twenty dollars a share." I, I I double dare you. I don't think you will. I don't think whatever this company says will be so bad that it'll make the stock go to six twenty a share. But even if it did back off. 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars a share over a couple of days, a week. 
you got to remember a couple of things. A week from now, these contracts have less than three weeks to live. They're going to shrink in value regardless because they're still worthless if they're out of the money. Obviously, if the shares come towards your puts, there will be some value added to them to a degree. But the time factor will negate the gain on these puts. I mean, it'll, it'll eviscerate them. If it takes two weeks for the shares to drop to 640 a share, uh, and these are 630s and 610s, they're still out of the money with only two weeks to go, they will be kind of where they are now. They will have not really moved very much, which is nice to know as, a, as an individual who's sitting on a, put, uh, a credit spread going, gosh darn it, I was wrong on this. The stock's gone against me, and I'm even. Like the, this is the worst case scenario I'm facing right here. Well, what do you do now? Well, you roll forward uh, your position. You, you now ro roll into April or May contracts. Might be the same two priced, but you're just taking a bigger premium off the table, time. Or you're striking down, you're moving the strikes lower and getting more money at the same time. So you might go down $10 on each of these or 15 or 20 on each of them, take a bigger credit. This is the, uh, the time factor that uh, is your secret weapons, your superpower that can make you a ton of additional money. Again, some of you out there are, are looking at me going, Bruce, I just, just, just help me, please. Help me, God, please. I want to quit my job, okay? I don't want to have to work anymore for anybody else. I just want to live off of my own money. How can you help me live off of the money I have, the value of my account that I have, the, the portfolio I've got, you know, whatever your situation. Every one of you is different. Some of you are going to say to me, look, I, I'm selling a business and uh, I'm going to have a net credit in my account here. Uh, I, I'm in a whole new life you know, in the near future. Uh, I won't have a business anymore. I won't have, I'm selling my job to, the, to somebody else. I'm out and I, I need to, you know, figure out how to live this life. I've never been in this position before. Congratulations, because it's exciting as all get up, but it's it's also very manageable. The good news is you don't have to do a trade every day. That's a home run trade that makes you a million dollars every single time. You, you, you don't have to do that. You're making a series of micro steps, highly calculated, that, uh, that are very conservative, all in your favor, with the odds all in your favor, because you're now a casino, and you're making the odds impossible for the gamblers to, to, to take money from you. It's next to impossible for them to win. That's the name of this game. So if you want to do credit spreads on puts or on calls or iron condors, you need one of each at the same time, there's all kinds of ways to do this and make this work for you. And uh, if you hang around here long enough, you will figure this out. Um, the way to really solidify the knowledge is to get the knowledge of how do these options work? Why does this guy who has a face for radio keep talking about shrinkage like it's a good thing? I thought watching Seinfeld with George Costanza and the shrinkage episode, that was a bad thing. And yet it's a good thing because shrinkage makes you richer. And uh, the richer you get, the more contracts you're going to be involved with going down the road, which means the richer you're going to get. Welcome to the the winning by losing uh, game, shrinkage. It's unbelievable. It's the opposite, George Costanza. It's the opposite of the, of, of the other side. Uh, there are lessons available on my website. Stocks Marcus with, Stock Marcus with Bruce dot CA. Um, there's the website right there. Get your butt over there and uh, check out my uh, my lessons. There's 17 of them now. All about options. Starting at number one with what the hell is an option? What are options? What, how are they created? What? Why are there options in the first place? What? What's this all about? You have to understand something if you're new to me here. The options market has been around for a long, long time. Um, in the farmer area, the United States farmer is aware of the futures markets from the 30s, from way back when. Um, uh, farmers needed to know if I'm going to raise 50 hogs for bacon and pork and whatnot, I need to know what can I get for these suckers once I get them all fattened up. 
back in the 20s and 30s, uh, farmers were breeding pigs, but they didn't know what they were going to get for the pig. Uh, well, this isn't any good. Uh, why am I feeding this thing? All this slop, which I still, you know, I got to pay for the grain. I'm going to feed these things. I got to take care of them. I got to make sure they don't get sick. I got veterinarian bills here. I'm on top of it. And I don't know what I'm going to get for them. Well, no, they can't. You can't do that. Uh, hog farmers uh, couldn't do it. Wheat farmers couldn't do it. Oats, uh, barley, um, any grains, orange juice futures. If you ever watch trading places, every commodity has a futures market to it pretty well. Metals, copper, zinc, gold, silver, futures, oil. I quote to you, Texas, West Texas Intermediate. That's a futures contract. The people who produce oil today or who spend money today drilling a $10 million well want to know how many barrels of oil do I have to find now? be able to get up to the surface to get to market what can i get for it if i pull that oil out of the ground is it going to pay for this well or do i not drill it it's as simple as that many many oil wells across canada and the usa have been drilled for almost 100 plus years and have been abandoned because yes there is oil down there yes there's oil we struck oil the problem is that the number of barrels that we're going to get out of the ground from that well is not enough based on the futures price of oil to make this well work. We need to get our million dollars back, our half a million bucks back, our five million back, whatever the amount it costs to drill it, service it, connect it to the pipelines and operate it. We need so many barrels a day of production at such and such a price or higher. Otherwise, it doesn't pay to bring out the oil. Just abandon the well, plug it up. We're not going to spend any more money on it. Millions of times this has been done by mankind in North America. Oil companies are very good at finding oil. They're very good at finding it. The problem is, is producing it at a profit. That's the problem. There you go. That's what futures are all about. So if you're going to take my classes, you're going to learn how options start, how they work, how they exist. Class number two, how can you write options? How are options written and why? And then it goes on to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to 17, all the other technical information you need to get your hands on. Because if you're going to become an option player in this business, you have got to be wiser than your competitor, who is most likely either one of two one of two things. They're a retail investor that knows as much as you do or less, or you're up against an institutional investor that knows way more than you and will always know way more than you. Now, that doesn't mean that they're always right. And sometimes when you're on the other side of a trade with an institutional investor, you're both right. Because the institutional investor is closing out a position that you're creating or is creating a position that you're trying to get out of. And it's timing for both of you that seems to work. You're closing out a transaction you made a month ago. You're shutting it down here at a profit. You're happy to take a walk. You're a winner. This entity over here is creating a position that they believe in the next month will benefit them to a certain level, and they're happy to pay, take this position on. It's in effect. Both of you got off escalators at the same floor at the same time. One of you came off of this one. One of you came off of that one. You landed on the same floor and you went into different departments in the department store. Everyone's happy. You got to where you needed to go. You got to do what you got to do. That's sometimes how options trading works. But then there are the retail investors who do not know what they're doing. And they bought a contract for six bucks. They're now selling it for a buck. Or they, uh, they uh, bought a contract for a dollar. It went to six dollars and came all the way to a dollar and now they're getting out. And there are those who bought a contract for five bucks, it went up to seven and it went to zero and they can't get out because there's no value to it. You have to be the opposite of all of these people. As an option writer, you're naturally on the opposite side of the market. You are creating an option from thin air, using capital to do it. You do not need to be a shareholder to write options. You can write options without owning a single share of stock revelations that this channel has brought to the viewers mind-blowing um, how you can make money in the market without owning stock if you like nvidia you don't like nvidia 
you have no opinion on NVIDIA. You just want to make money off of NVIDIA. You don't care whether the stock goes up or down. You just want to make money on NVIDIA. You don't have to be a shareholder of it on any of those scenarios to make money on NVIDIA. But I'll say this. If you've got 10 grand and you buy $10,000 of NVIDIA, $716 a share, you're going to get your hands on, uh, what is it, uh, 13 shares? Maybe 14, maybe 14 shares. They go up. 50 bucks a share, you make $700. Congratulations. If it goes down $70 a share, you lose $1,000. You're not wiped out. You're, you're not like zero, okay? Your 10 grand is still worth nine, eight, maybe it's worth 11. You know, you're there. Here's the thing though. The stock goes up 50, 60 bucks a share and you sell it. And you go, I just made $350. It went up 50 bucks a share. I made three, about seven shares or whatever it was. Has this changed your life? Can you retire from your day job? Can you say to your boss, I'm out of here. I just made $350 on NVIDIA this week. I'm quitting my day job. You no, know, you can't do that. Um, but you've got uh, ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars in your 401k or your account, and you're writing um, um, credit spreads on NVIDIA. You're writing twenty credit spreads, bringing in eight thousand dollars with shrinkage in the next few weeks, you're buying those contracts back to lock in a $6,000 profit from eight down to two. You took the six. Um, and you're doing that every month or two, you're bringing in 6,000 bucks every time. And you're kind of going, I am building a bit of a nest egg here where I could put three months of money into my checking account over here to live off of. And I could say sayonara to my day job and I can now trade with, you know, with my portfolio here for the next three months and add every month or so, so many dollars to live on going forward. I could quit my day job doing this, or you might find it. I'm quitting that job to take a part-time job over here, or I'm quitting that job where I have to commute to for this job. That's where I stay at home. And I only put in 20 hours a week. I make about half the money I used to make. I make two thirds of the money I used to make, but I work from home now and I hang out with uncle Bruce and his gang and I trade on the market. That might be the lifestyle change. That's the first move that you're making. And then from there, a year down the road, you might decide, now I'm giving up the, the part-time gig because I'm making so much money now on the market side as I'm getting much more comfortable with this. I'm saying goodbye to working for someone else forever. You're now self-employed as an asset manager in your own little hedge fund. You're what, 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 uh, what some people call a garage band hedge fund. You're working out of your garage, you're working out of your rec room, out of your basement, out of your dining room, wherever you find it comfortable to sit down and do your thing. If, of course, if you have one of these, your little hedge fund goes with you wherever you go, in town, out of town, uh, out of country, wherever you're going, you're taking your investment with you, your, your machine with you, and you can trade options with one of these anywhere on the planet. Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, those of you going for a walk this morning, listening to me on your earphones, you're getting your exercise and you listen to Uncle Bruce, he's pumping you up. Well, I'm excited. I am stoked. Welcome all to the party. 15 minutes from now, we open for trading and uh, let's get on with it. Uh, let's get you richer and, and thank you all for being here. Larry Titus, good morning, everybody. I am the 99th thumbs up for this show already. And, uh, Thank you all for these thumbs ups that you've already put together. It's it's absolutely fabulous. Thank you all. Many of you are talking to each other here, which is beautiful. I love it. Uh, this is typical when you see the comments over here. Many folks are saying hi to each other. They haven't seen each other for a while. They haven't talked to each other for a while. Uh, there are two uh, kinds of folks over here. There are folks with their names in the green type, and they have a little avatar beside their name. They are... Um, members of this channel. They're either Chillin' with Uncle Bruce members or Gold Bagel members. Um, if you see someone with just the name in black type only, that's an individual that is a follower of this channel, and you're more than welcome to be here as a follower, uh, but they're not members, and so they can comment here uh, until the uh, roughly just about the opening of the day. But once the market goes and the bells go, we shift this, the chat only to members and, uh, and go from there. So if you'd like to become a member of this channel, I'd love to have you here. You have to find your YouTube uh, button. There's probably a, a link button down below here, something that says join underneath here somewhere. 
you click on that, it'll show you the two levels of membership that you can be. You can either be a Chillin member or a Gold Bagel member, and you choose the one you like. If you're a Chillin member, you can chat uh, with us uh, during market trading hours. If you're a Gold Bagel member, you can chat during market trading hours, like when I'm on the air, but you can also join me 8 o'clock every morning instead of 8.30 every morning Eastern time for the Gold Bagel Alert show. And Wednesday evenings, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time, prime time live with Uncle Bruce for Gold Bagel members only. And Gold Bagel members also benefit from the occasional trade tip of the day that I'll release just for Gold Bagel members so that I help you to pay for the cost of this through some trade tips and the extra knowledge that you're gathering up. Thank you all for being part of this channel. Uh, Computer Wiz, I have been a member of this channel for 35 months. Wow, uh, that is awesome. Uh, that is a Gold Bagel member saying hi to us. Um, thank you, my friend. Um, it is, uh, it, 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 there's no question. This channel is only on the air because of its membership. There are 253 people watching right now. That I'm pointing at a meter that I see. You don't see it. It's probably down there somewhere. There are 253 people here right now. Um, they're from all over the world. They are uh, becoming prolific option writers. Uh, they figured out that they can make money on a consistent basis writing options and not getting sucked into the long only game. They don't follow hot stock tips and look for the big win of the day. They make their money and grind it out from these option losers, just like casinos take money from gamblers all day and all night long. Uh, there are 121 thumbs ups that have come in so far. And I thank you all so very much for helping me out. Uh, the advertising revenue that this channel generates on YouTube does not give me enough money to even buy my coffee with, really. I, I, it, it doesn't. It's not enough. Um, the only reason this channel's on the air is because of memberships and folks taking the classes. That's it right there. Those are the two that keep me on the air. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Why have I been on the air for three years now, every day during the market hours? As much as I can, anyway. It's because, frankly, people are making money here. That's it. Those who write options make money. And people who make money pay memberships. Uh, they, that's why they're, they won't let them go. Bama Babe, uh, thank you, Bama Babe, so much. 35 months for you as well. That is huge. Uh, thank you, Bama Babe. Chilling with Uncle Bruce Level. Love you. Uh, glad you're here. And, uh, and uh, you know, just, I, I, I just, I'm just marvel at it. Um, we started offering memberships in March of uh, 21. I started going live on January 21. By March 21, we started offering memberships to get rid of some troll action. And it's worked really, really well uh, to get rid of trolls. And uh, by the way, 131 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Um, and here we are. Um, it's going to be three years next month. This is the February 20th by, by March 16 or so, just around that time frame, three years. So soon you're going to see 36 month members over, over here. Over here. Soon you're going to see 36 month members popping up from day one. Um, I'm truly humbled by by that. So thank you all, um, and keep the thumbs ups coming in. Help us with the momentum with the YouTube. We we love you guys. Uh, Joe, you're a rock star. Keep going. Thank you, uh, Lee. I I've only been investing two years. Should I stay long for a while or start this options game? Also, how much is needed to starting off? Uh, Lee, um, if you've been here a while, you know the answer to these questions. Head to my website and you can find out, the, 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 you see the uh, lessons there. You can pick up one at a time whenever you're ready. Uh, start with lesson number one and uh, head on down the list to 17 whenever you want. You want to watch a, a lesson once a month or once a week, you want to do a lesson. You want to pretend that my lessons are like a college course. And you're going to take a, a, a class twice a week, maybe three times a week. Have you got the time? They're two hours a class, kind of. Uh, some are a little less than that. Um, but, you know, you can rewatch them whenever you want, of course. That's the best part about the classes. Um, you don't have to buy them all. You just buy one at a time. But I would say start with number one and get on it. And uh, you'll figure out yourself uh, within a class or two, you'll already be starting to write options. I mean, you will start writing options if you're into it. 
very quickly into the lessons and you'll now earn while you learn and uh, uh, this is a common thing around here that many of my viewers here who joined three years ago started taking classes from me in june of 2021 that's when the first class was done and so these option writers from june july august of 2021 uh, they didn't have 17 lessons to choose from. They had three, four, five. They just came along every lesson and learned more and more and more. They're still taking the lessons as of lesson 17, and now coming up will be 18. So you can catch up to the gang that's already here and earn while you learn. Um, doesn't take much. Uh, become a member of the channel and, and become an active uh, participant in the chat. We'd love to have you. Welcome everybody so much. Um, uh, Callum, I hope you're here for another three years. Uncle Roos, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, how does taxes compare uh, on just buying stock? Is there a difference? I, I'm not a tax guy. I believe, though, it's all capital gains, but I'm not a tax guy, so I'm the wrong guy to ask. Uncle Bruce has definitely made retirement much easier. You cannot retire on just Social Security and Medicare here in the United States, but trading options along with retirement is a game changer wise words from a wise youtuber a member of this channel this gal right here you listen to every word she says she knows what she's talking about uh, john uh, which class should i try to become richer with elon within three days <laughs> good luck john biscuit nice knowing you um you weren't listening to anything i said <laughs> Thank you all for popping in. We're seven minutes away from opening for the day. Seven minutes. Uh, we're up, uh, one, what, we're down 118. 118 on the Dow, 0.3 of a percentage point. We're down 17 and three quarters on S&P, a third of a point, and we're down 70 on NASDAQ, 0.39. So we're actually getting better as the markets are coming closer to open. Oil is up 61 cents a barrel, 79.80. There's a futures for you right there. All right, Patman, uh, neat, 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 neat. I'm here, baby. W. Walters. I've been a member for 32 months. I would love to join Gold Bagel, but no join button for iOS said. Can you change that? Um, I don't know what to tell you other than however you became a member of this channel, you should be able to become a Gold Bagel member. Now, can you upgrade your membership might be the key. You might need to go to your YouTube settings some, somewhere over there maybe and they give you the option to upgrade to gold because they'll show you you're a member of this channel and this channel if you're more than a member of one channel it'll show you all your membership and it'll offer you upgrades uh, if there are any of to be upgraded to i think that's it on the other hand maybe uh, you join my channel on another device when you did join the channel and that was running on another system go to your laptop or your your whatever and use the other system to upgrade your membership and then you should be a gold big member I, I get i don't know i i don't um all right um savage of wall street good morning my fellow simpletons and degenerates finally at home and that project i worked on is over trying to get back in the swing of things i think i forgot how this is done uncle bruce how, how do we make money here again bobby walter i think you need to do it on a home device no mobile for apple there see bobby helping um bp john the lesson that teaches us how the uh, mm like citadel can trade illegally and make it legal that's the lesson you want <laughs> five minutes to go until we open for the day uh, welcome all of you uh, from the long weekend we just had it's great that you're all back here and hanging out with us uh, can't uh, can't thank you all enough for being part of this uh, family uh, if you join this channel you will be welcomed with open arms by the the other members here um, become a member of this channel and uh, send me a private email and say Bruce I'm a member of your channel can I get to, can you help me join the discord group I'd love to join the discord group you've got um, let me know if you'd like to be part of that we'll uh, We'll get you the link you need for that. And uh, now you can not only hang out with uh, with me here uh, every day when I'm live, you get to hang out with the gang here uh, when I'm not on the air. And uh, you get to talk about me. <laughs> can you believe that guy? Uh, the audacity of that man to say that we could make money and quit our day job. Who does he think he is? And 
you can either you know love or hate Uncle Bruce. It's up to you. Um, thank you all for uh, for joining in uh, to this channel. I, I thank you. The thumbs up meter now is showing 140 thumbs ups. Thank you for uh, being there for that. We are four minutes away from opening. We love to hit 200 thumbs ups every day, and uh, we appreciate you uh, coming through here. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to be with you every day, Monday to Friday. At this time, we're opening in four minutes. We're going to follow this market and see what's going on. Uh, see what the market has in store. At the moment, I'm looking at some of our favorites that we follow. Uh, we've got a, a about a 494 market on Rocket Lab. Maybe we're up a nickel there. Uh, SoFi is about 832 or so, down about four cents. GameStop down 15 cents. We get earnings in about I think two weeks. Matterport, uh, it looks like it's up three cents. I think they report tonight. Uh, 23 Me is at 76 cents a share or so. Spire is at about 11.79, up four. Smart Rent up 14 cents at 2.89. Just can't stay above three. Apple down 57 cents. Goldman down 194. A Cisco down 22. Tesla down three bucks. Uh, Arc Innovations off 62 cents. Kathy Woods buying up SoFi again. Microsoft down 80 cents, Pfizer down 4, HPQ down 9, Alphabet, that's Google, down 82 cents, Amazon down 177, NVIDIA down 677 at 6.19 a share. Unity down 57, uh, AI, uh, uh, C3.AI Inc., uh, known as AI, is off 35 cents at 28.38. Adobe uh, down 13 bucks, 12.95 right now in the pre market. Uh, we've got Netflix down $4. We have Spiders down 2 bucks. We've got uh, Q's down 2.21. IBM off a, is up 11 cents actually. It's got, you know, one of the only greens out there. Facebook down 430. Benick Semiconductors down 150. Home Depot down 885. Enphase down 226. Palantir down 48 cents at 23.96. And Uber down 36 cents at 78.05. So far this early morning in the pre-market that is about to end in the next two minutes okay there you go everybody uh thank you for joining in here and helping out and popping in and saying hi it's great to have you um let's see we may or may not share embarrassing shots of, of uncle bruce on screen on discord you, 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 we may or may not do that over there melvin uh, i'm an as a new member uh melvin is a new member of this channel and is an upgrader has upgraded to gold bagel status thank you and uh, congratulations melvin welcome to the party pal uh it's great to have you here with the uh, with the gang of regulars uh, here on the gold bagel level uh we uh, we kind of have fun around here as you know and now you're part of the pre-market show every day and primetime live where we try to create havoc uh, fantastic um thank you all for, uh, for joining in. And Melvin, thanks, man, for becoming a member of the Gold Tribe here. Uh, we have more members that are Gold Bagel members than chilling with Uncle Bruce members. It is uh, spreading. The uh, The crossover happened about two months ago, and the spread continues to build. Uh, gold Bagels, more Gold Bagelers coming in than regulars. It's uh, truly humbling to see. And uh, I, Jen can't believe it. She's going to get kidney. Those people pay more money, don't they? Yes, they do. More people pay more money than pay less money to be part of the channel. Gotta love it. And speaking of gold, uh, Larry Titus right there. Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, the bells have been rung by Larry Titus, which means only one thing. You guys can now start making money because the markets are open. And away we go. Uh, Susan Shops is here. Number 146 on the thumbs up meter. Luca, nice one, Larry. Way to hit the bells, buddy. Fantastico. Uh, welcome all to the channel and to hopefully some organized mayhem. Now we'll see how it all works out. Uh, I do see the Dow about 76 points lower in the early indication. We'll see just what happens here in a few minutes as everything settles in. And we'll follow this uh, market as we usually do. I've got the Dow right now maybe down 88, 98. S&P down 16 and NASDAQ down 80. Those are early, early first seconds of, of trading coming through. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Um, uh, we've got oil up 52 cents a barrel. Spiders, uh, Spire Global is off 16 cents at the moment. Uber down 20. SoFi down 7. GameStop down 13. Rocket Lab is up 6 cents or so. Up 8 now, 4.97. Uh, AI down 32 cents. This 
spiders 155 lower the queues are 146 lower at the moment uh we've got um let's see here hang on let me just make sure i don't screw this up there we go um we've got apple down 24 and face down 250 amd is off three bucks adobe down 11 40 netflix down about 20. more red than green to start the day but it's very very early today welcome all to the channel coffee time um enjoy a, a libation and uh thank you for joining me from around the world today oh yeah baby papa needs his coffee no question about it mm. 59 point drop on the dow doesn't look to be all that severe to start the day uh, we're, we're down just four cents on spire now uh, Uber off 56 cents, um, SoFi down 12, GameStop down 15, Rocket Lab up 7 at the moment, okay? Thank you for joining in. Uh, we watched this morning some news about Capital One and Discover Card um, becoming one. Uh, it's an all-stock deal. It's a $35 billion merger, but it's just a stock transaction. I don't know if it'll go through. I don't know if the regulators will allow it, um, but it's going to take uh, a year or two to sort that all out. And uh, in the meantime, the stocks are doing what they're doing. Um, JJ, so far they're dropping right now. There you go. We'll see how uh, we'll see how the regulators react to uh, to this whole uh, uh, so you know this whole Discover Capital One thing. Um, if they become one, they would be the largest credit card. Um, a company in the, in the United States, it would be the largest ahead of Visa and MasterCard. So everyone is watching this closely to see what uh, what comes of it. Uh, SoFi volume only three point one million. Nothing to worry about here. Very quiet opening. Uh, GameStop down seventeen cents on one hundred sixty thousand. Nothing going on. Um, Rocket Lab now up thirteen five oh two on Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab continuing. At my personal opinion. Continuing its march into the 6650 range is where it's headed now, and uh, it's at 502 this morning. So we'll watch for that. Uh, AI down 73 cents. Uh, we've got Apple up two cents actually. Turned around, gone green. There you go. Giddy up, Odin's pumpkin. Yeah, Rocket Lab, five bucks, Bruce. You're right. Look at that. Um, what else is going on? Anything else crazy? Uh, Google up 40. Moderna up six. Pfizer up 13 cents. IBM up 52 cents. Uh, Boeing is up 45 cents despite all their bad news. Uh, Meta Platforms up 248. That's Facebook. Target up 234. JP Morgan up 23. Costco up 678. Walmart up $9 a share. Um, that's what we got going there. So welcome everybody to the program and to the good time hour. Uh, we're down. The, we're up on the Dow. Up 23 on the Dow. We just turned around and went green on the Dow Jones at the moment here it is um see what's going on um uh, 15 point loss on s p a third of a point and uh nasdaq down 79 half a percentage point so something good happened on the dow something positive jumped the dow jones uh, i don't know what that something positive is but um, the dow is up the winners are walmart uh, with their earnings today up 5.3%, Intel up 2.9%. Those are your winners on, on the Dow. Like they are above 1% by a bunch. The losers, and we're only talking 1% here, 1.3% is Caterpillar, Dow Inc., which is the chemical company, down 0.87, Visa down 0.84, that makes sense. Home Depot down three quarters of a point, and Nike down 0.72, Disney down 0.63. So those are the indicators. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. It will need a little more time for that to kind of come a little more clearly to us. All right. Alberto, welcome. Um, Melvin Mayo, make sure you take advantage of the Prime Show on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, because Melvin is now a Gold Bagel member, I, I have a suspicion that Melvin might be able to access reruns of primetime live um, that have been done in the past. He might be able to do that. He might even have access to this morning's uh, pre-alert show that I did at eight o'clock this morning. He might be able to watch those. Splare, uh, 5.05 on that uh, Rocket Lab. Yeah, 5.06 right now, Splare, um, now above. Bobby, I wrote uh, two uh, DraftKings last week. Um, 
looking for the buyback today on this dip. Ah, there you go, Bobby. Working it. You know the stock, so you should be able to play it. Well done, sir. Uh, we're up 22 on the Dow now. Uh, now we're negative three on the Dow. So we're, we're, you know, there's some volatility here. Welcome to this kind of uh, market. Uh, we're now 17 on S&P Dow, 97 NASDAQ. So NASDAQ's backing off. S&P seems to be backing up. The Dow was positive. Now it was negative. Now it's four plus four again. So it's kind of hanging around here. Um, not sure if it knows what it should be doing. NVIDIA is down 20 bucks a share to 705. For those of you out there who are looking to put a uh, credit spread on NVIDIA in anticipation of earnings tomorrow, uh, calls or puts are a way to go uh, well out of the, you know, well ahead or behind the market. And uh, look at your option chain. I would be recommending uh, the third Friday of March. Uh, that's what I'd be looking for. And uh, see if you can get a credit spread, say a $20 differential between the contract you write and the contract you buy. Uh, get yourself a credit between 3 and $4 a share, uh, you know, put contract at the very least. See what, what it does. Um, or look at April or May, up to you see what's going on um let's see here welcome 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 melvin thanks i'm there dude i'm there i'm into it right on melvin thank you for popping in here uh splayer sold my day trade at five and i bought it back at five let's rock here uh 498.7 on rocket lab splayer's making money today there you go uh we're down nine and a half on the dow as we try to sort out what's going on spires up a penny uh, Uber down 118, SoFi down a dime, GameStop down 34, Rocket Lab up, up about a dime at 499 right now. That's what I see here. JJ uh, Spider, February 29th, 495. Uh, again, I, I don't don't know what to make of this. Uh, we're at 497.58 right now on Spire. Uh, JJ uh, may have a very keen interest in a 495 uh, contract, a put contract expiring feb 29 in nine days uh so if this, the, if this thing stays under 495 uh, jj might be a happy camper uh, i'm assuming i don't know that jj is giving me virtually no information that i can work on here so i don't know what's going on there i'm only guessing with jj right now thank you all apple down a buck and face down 220 amd down 630 adobe down 650 netflix down six bucks NVIDIA down $24. Now, you know, it sounds like so bad, doesn't it? When I say, oh, it's down $6. And you remember, Adobe is $540 a share. Uh, Netflix, $577 a share. And NVIDIA is $700. Now, you divide these stocks by 10, you know, and you got Adobe at $54 down 65 cents. You got Netflix at $57 down 60 cents. So that's the relative nature of this, right? Uh, $70 stock in NVIDIA down $240 a share after all the hype makes perfect sense to be down that kind of percentage so don't don't read too much into these numbers in that sense um, it sounds more dramatic than it really is but it's a movement in one direction or another no question unity down 159 google is down six cents Moderna's up 54 cisco down 18 pfizer up 21 ibm up 59 hbq down eight microsoft down 220 a share at 401 the high for microsoft not long ago, four hundred and twenty dollars and eighty-two cents. We're back to four hundred one eighty-five. Uh, Microsoft has come back nicely. Uh, Twenty odd dollars. That's five percent uh, pullback of five percent. This is where I have repeated myself a million times over about rollovers. When you write, say, uh, credit spreads on call contracts, and a stock goes up on you you will use time to roll forward your contracts at a higher strike price time will give you a higher strike price it won't cost you any money if you do it right and microsoft has given option writers countless opportunities to roll forward roll forward roll forward roll forward and i've had some viewers who've been reluctant to do it but i've, I've hopefully been able to make it happen for them so that now that we're down twenty dollars from the high of microsoft just in the last week and a half two weeks the pressure is off of those out there who have 
credit spreads, call credit spreads on Microsoft, just as this, just this one example only. Um, this is exactly how this works. Amazon was 175 for its high. It's 166, less pressure there. Um, and same with many other of the stocks that, that folks are following here and hanging out with us on. You, uh, on SPY contracts, spiders, or on triple Qs, if you've rolled over your calls as the market kept going higher and higher and higher, you kept rolling with it, kept rolling with it, kept rolling, despite you feeling like, I'm, I think I'm losing, I think I'm losing this trade. There comes a point where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you realize, you know what, Bruce, uh, just a $5 drop on these things have, has made a huge difference on these contracts. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm looking great. And another $5 drop, and you're going, ah, ah, I'm loving this. I like this game. And uh, markets go up, markets go down. That's the name of the game here. All right, Bobby um, uh, Feld, I wrote for 148. I bought back for 72 cents in three days. Congratulations, Bobby. Alex, oh my God, 250,000 shares, wanted at 821 on SoFi. 825 last trade right now. Um, JR, 141, good morning, everybody. Let's go make that moolah today. Welcome, JR, to the program. Nice avatar you got there. Uh, same with Alex. Love your avatar, buddy. Uh, it's looking pretty darn good. Splair's got a good looking avatar over there, too. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys know what you're doing on your avatar uh, building out there. I uh, love that. Uh, thank you all for including me in your avatar. I love it. All right, welcome to the program, everybody. We're talking about here, Jen and I. We're talking about a meet and greet for Southern California. We're talking about a meet and greet. Jen is doing so well with her hip. Uh, she goes in to see her surgeon on Wednesday for a follow up and. Uh, She's got nothing to complain about. She's one happy camper. Uh, she's walking around the house without even a cane now. She's just, just walking around the house. Didn't you just have an operation like four weeks ago? Yeah. You just walk around the house? Yeah. You're not complaining about pain. No. No, I'm not complaining about pain. There's, there's the little odd ache, little ache here, little ache there. But she actually slept on her side the other day where the surgery was. And that is a big deal. That is a huge deal. She said, not only did I turn over on my side, surgery, sur surgery side, I fell asleep on it. I was out like a light and it was great. So Jen is doing fantastic, which means we are now talking about the possibility of a meet and greet for Southern California. So stand by for that info, that is coming out soon uh, as we kind of figure out the calendar going forward. We're getting excited to catch up with some of you guys. This is going to be great. Thank you all. 22-point uh, down dip on the Dow at the moment, down 30 on S&P and 168 on NASDAQ. A sell wave has come in. A sell wave has come in. Spire down 14, Uber down 167, SoFi 824, GameStop down 51 to 1361, Rocket Lab is still up 4.5 cents at 493.5, AI down a buck 50, Spiders are down 291, the Qs are down $4, the Apple shares down 155, Enphase down 284, AMD down 682, Adobe down 12 bucks, Netflix down 950. NVIDIA down 32.80, uh, Tesla down 6.29, Matterport down uh, 4.3 cents, Smart Rent down 2 cents, Owens, Co Owens Corning is up 35, ATIP unchanged, Unity down 176, Google down 30 cents, uh, Moderna up 62 cents, Cisco down 27, Pfizer is up, IBM is up just fractionally, HBQ down 8, Microsoft down 117, um, Amazon down 265, Home Depot down $4, Vanix Semiconductors down 450. Goldman Sachs down about 40. Boeing uh, down 14 cents. Meta down 133. Target up 164. JP Morgan up 52. Costco up 430. Walmart up 920. Disney down 124. American Airlines at 1462 down 2. AMC Entertainment down 21 cents at 462. DraftKings down 239. 4218. Royal Caribbean down 152 at 11450 a share. So it's a red wave this morning to start the day. Uh, it's not like catastrophically red, but it is a red session. Uh, we're down about 14 now on the Dow, um, uh, one-tenth of a percentage point. So there you go. We got a lot to uh, follow here 
and see what's going on. Uncle Bruce, you can come over to on at the 12th of June here to Belgium for another good picture. Otherwise, I'll probably have to try something new for my channel. Um, thanks to Uncle B. Uh, Splair, well, uh, you know, with the first one, I was, I was just kidding you. <laughs> I love Splair. Splair, when we're in Europe, you'll know. Uh, and we're in your hood. We'll catch up with you. Uh, we, we know some coffee places. You know some coffee places in Europe, but we'll, we'll figure out a way. Yeah. I uh, look forward to seeing a bunch of you in Europe the next time we're in there. Um, I've always wondered if we were to have a meet and greet in Europe, where should we do it? Like, should we have a London meet and greet and have people come into London from the UK? Should we have a, should we have a meet and greet in Amsterdam or a, a meet and greet in uh, Vienna, uh, call a meet and greet in uh, Zurich, Switzerland or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Um, any old time. Um, anyway, uh, Charlie, dive spider, dive, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, there are a few viewers here who are uh, very keenly watching Spire and Q's, uh, very closely watching these markets um, for good reason. Uh, they have uh, they have rolled forward um, positions, uh, call credit spreads. And they are eager to see these give up a little bit, to kind of moderate a tad. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, there's uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons they care. We're down 37 on the Dow now, uh, 28 on S&P, and 155 on Nasdaq. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, you know, this time if you come over here, I know some good German food places, and one with the caffeinated, uh, caffeine free, and I think Amsterdam or something central would be a good idea for all Europeans. There you go, rock and roll. You know, Copenhagen, uh, Stockholm for any of you up there, uh, but uh, you know, Germany, I'm open to uh, you know wherever Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich. Um, uh, you know, we we uh, Jen and I have uh, been to a few of these places a couple of times, and we'd like to go back. Uh, we we love it. We just love it. Um, a fool of a took Bruce. I've rolled my SoFi ten dollar puts twice. If I get exercised, I get the stock for six eleven. Give it to me, Alex. I got some more SoFi at eight twenty two, baby. Farmless Uncle Bruce. I finally got one of my bad trades rolled up and out with some breathing room. Not great, but at least there's more time. Right on, Farmless Splair. Uh, but honestly, here in my city, it's hard to find real German cuisine. It's like not available if you're not in Bavaria or East Germany nowadays. Linda B., I'd love to join you guys uh, to the next meet and greet in Los Angeles. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, we're, we're sort of leaning towards like Ontario, California, you know, kind of head in there. Uh, that's the Highway 10 and 15 intersection. Ontario Mills Mall is in the area. Kind of there. Um, we're, you know, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll find. We'll figure it out. And we might be right back at the same place we did it before at the Outback. We might just do an Outback thing. Anyway, we'll see um, Alex saying a relaxing Eurostar trip to Amsterdam. Count me in. How about that? There you go. See, all kinds of possibilities to meet in Europe. Uh, we'll get together here in L.A. this spring, maybe in Europe sometime in the summer or fall. I don't know. And then Jen and I are talking, are we going to do this Australia trip this year? Are we going to do Australia, New Zealand, and have a meet and greet in Auckland and have a meet and greet in Sydney? I don't know. Uh, maybe you could do something like that. All depends on the hips and the knees and <laughs> the wear and tear on the bodies. I don't know. We'll see what's going on. Um, what's happening with our stocks here? Uh, 822 on SoFi, down 13. Rocket Lab holding a 1.5 cent gain. Uh, AI down 148. Uh, the uh, Spiders are down 283 and the Qs are down 4 bucks. So they're on a, under a little pressure. Apple down 140, Enphase down 169, AMD down 644, Adobe down 1080, Netflix down 10 bucks, Nvidia down 34 dollars at six. Uh, well, 39 dollars, 686. Pre-earning speculation is kicking in, and watch the volatility. Those of you who are considering put uh, credit spreads or call credit spreads. You want to be a hundred away from the market ballpark and just kind of pick your spots right there and see what gives. But this stock can go up or down 
20, 30, 40, 50 bucks in a day. No trouble at all. 14.3 million traded on NVIDIA, the low of the day, 682. Right now, it's 686, down $39 a share. There you go. It is the number one traded uh, stock among gamblers right now for earnings. Uh, options gambling is unbelievable. Uh, credit spread writing is the way to go, in my opinion. It's the way to play this game. All right. Marcus, I am number 160 on the thumbs up meter here. Dude, a nice pullback this morning. Shrinkage commence. Alberto, let's fill our pockets. Bagel, Amelia. There you go, kids. Let's see what the shrinkage wants to do, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Oh, yeah. Mm. Dad, Dad needs that. Oh, yes. The coffee is a good thing. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining in today, for letting us know how long you've been a member of this channel. It is much appreciated. Thank you all. Those of you who have hit the thumbs up button, we have 161 thumbs ups now on the go here. And I thank you all very much for that. That is a very, very good thing. We're on members only now for chat. If you're a member of this channel, you're welcome to uh, pop in and say hi and, and thanks, everyone. If you're not a member of this channel, please consider becoming a member of this channel today. Uh, join in the Chill and Funk of Roost level or Gold Bagel member if you want to be one of the senior members of this channel. And I would love to have you here. Uh, we'll try to uh, uh, keep the channel going to help you make more money in this market. Um, writing stock options a good way to go especially on a day like today oh my if you wrote the contracts on friday thursday wednesday last week are you smiling today all over the place there's all kinds of uh shrinkage going on here which is looking really good here for a number of you guys well done everybody 161 thumbs up meter uh was what i was looking at now 164 fantastic you know what I don't understand, and, and maybe some of you might know the answer to this, but for whatever reason, it used to be that my channel would show my meter on the thumbs up meter changing all the time, but it doesn't do that anymore. It's now like a frozen picture, and I have to refresh the page every time to get the uh, the thumbs up meter updated. Does anyone know the, an answer to that uh, dilemma? Is there an answer to that dilemma? I, I don't know if there is. It's been this way for about a month now, and i I don't know uh, if it'll ever go back. I can't uh, can't say. It's a hard life. Uh, it's not easy. Um, thumbs. Uh, Dow Jones down twenty points. Uh, S and P down thirty. Uh, Nasdaq down one seventy seven. There you go. Kathy Woods ETF sold Coinbase stock one hundred fifty million bucks worth in three days. Apparently, that's a headline. Uh, I do. I am aware of Kathy Woods loading up on SoFi though. She's been buying it up. She also bought a bunch of Rocket Lab. See how they play out for her. I think she'll make money on both of those, uh, without any doubt in my mind. Uh, GameStop down 43, SoFi down just nine cents. Rocket Lab down a buck, a, a penny and a half right now. Uh, same here, Uncle Bruce, Pappy J, um, and dude, it used to be so easy. Uh, we used to watch the thumbs up meter just roll when the show. Now you got to refresh your page. Uh, we're, we're 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 puzzled. Uh, Splitter, for me, it's somehow always like that. And added to this, I have now to refresh the chat. If I'm on the phone, I got to refresh the chat. Yeah, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what the issue is. Um, dude, sometimes it does the same thing to me on the mobile app. It updates each thumb, but not on my desktop. You'd think the desktop would be, you know, better. My thumbs up meter stays the same number unless I refresh the page, says Stephen Butler. Same thing for me, Bruce. I can't see an update unless I refresh it. That's what I'm saying. I've got 164 last I had. I'm now refreshing my page. I'm 167. So I just uh, I just wonder, you know, I really do. Uh, those of you out there um, who are uh, messaging me on, on private email, thank you very much uh, for, you know, letting me, letting me know how you're doing. Those of you who need help with your classes or your links, let me know, and I'll, I'll get you set up with and get you straightened away on your class links and all of that. For those of you who want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me because you've, you've figured it's time to have a sit-down with Uncle Bruce and kind of review your scenario, let me know with an email. Um, when would you like a one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have a day in mind? Um, uh, what, what kind of time frame would work for you? Try to tell me Eastern time <laughs> so I know what you're talking about because uh, that's what I'll refer to you. I'll send you an email saying, how about we get together on this day 
at noon Eastern time. So many people will go, oh, noon in L.A.? Oh, perfect. No, 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 no. Noon Eastern time. I'm trying to uh, kind of keep it consistent. So uh, kind of keep that in mind, uh, you know, wherever you are in Canada, the USA, uh, are you in Eastern time or not? That'll help you out, hopefully, because uh, once in a while I, I set up my show and I set up my one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm waiting for my guest to show up, and the guest isn't there. And it's because the guest thinks it's two hours from now because they're thinking Central time, not Eastern time. So a little logistics we work out. Anyway, you guys let, let me know. If any of you'd like to have a one-on-one, -on -one, send me a private email at brucefarmer at hotmail.com. And uh, we'll go over the scenario you're in right now, where you're at, what your account's doing, work-wise, career-wise, family-wise, whatever you want to fill me in on. And then we'll try, to, we'll, try to get you, we'll try to get you sorted and get you going, okay? And thank you for those of you visiting, visiting this website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. Uh, it's a Canadian website, CA. Thank you for popping over there. The classes are, are available over there. If you want to order one up or two or three, fire away. Um, we'll get you. We'll get you squared up. Thank you all for joining me today from wherever you are. Um, there you go. Refresh page equals another ad plate, says Bobby. Well, that might be better for me, I guess. I don't know. Uh, interesting. Um and Bobby says, you know, it's been like that for longer than a month, Uncle Brissa. Answer, it is what it is as far as a jammed up, uh, you know, count of thumbs ups. Spare for me, desktop is definitely better for others, probably mobile. Maybe it's depending on what device went into your uh, Wi-Fi. It's hard to guess. So, Lorraine, Uncle Brissa, I'm on my tablet and it refreshes all the time. It always refreshes on my tablet. Brian, 170 thumbs up. Good morning. Ad play before your show is from IBKR. They are finally advertising relevant media. Isn't that interesting? I, I've seen all kinds of brokerage ads and bank ads on my, you know, channel too, because uh, they know what I'm. You know, there are they're targeting me. Uh, obviously, for banks uh, it makes sense, but that's interesting, Brian. Thank you for for filling me in on this. We're down eight now on on the Dow. Only down like eight. Uh, we're down twenty seven on S and P, one seventy on Nasdaq right now. Uh, SoFi is down ten cents at eight twenty six. Aspire down four. Uber down one eighty. Uh, uh, GameStop down 54, Rocket Lab down 3 cents, AI down 145, Spiders down 264, and the Qs are down 407. Um, Apple down 134, uh, Enphase down 278, AMD down 695, Adobe down 10 bucks, Netflix down 870, Nvidia down 31, Tesla down 6, Matterport down 7.5 cents, Smart Rent up a penny. Over on uh, Unity, we're uh, down 175. Google uh, down four cents. And Moderna's up 68. Uh, Cisco down seven. Pfizer up 32. IBM is now down 65 cents. HBQ up three cents. Microsoft down 433. The slippage continues at Microsoft, which I think is good news for some folks around here. Iron Condor players, um, credit spread uh, traders are kind of rejoicing at a three ninety nine seventy two Microsoft price, down from a high of four twenty. Interesting stuff. Amazon down two fifty. Home Depot down two thirty five. Vanek Semiconductors off four sixty. Goldman down thirty six cents. Boeing is up one fifty five. Defying logic. Meta down one twenty eight. Uh, Target uh, up two sixty five. J P Morgan up sixty five. Costco up six fifty six. Walmart up nine eighty five. A uh, Disney down one twenty six. American Airlines up twenty eight cents. A M C down twenty. DraftKings down three bucks. Uh, Royal Caribbean down one thirty two right now. There you go. That's the uh, the early morning, 30-minute uh, in um, situation right now with a 15, 20-point drop on the Dow. Nothing too serious out there, but that's what we've got. Um, never a dull moment. I'll tell you something this weekend. That, that when I get long weekends off, uh, I tell you, I refresh, you know. I really I really just go into mush mode. I, I think about the channel. I think about you guys, and I think, oh, I should do a video on this. I should do a video on that. That's sort of Friday night. And then Saturday morning, I kind of wake up and go, God, I'm tired. Oh, geez, I'm so glad I got some extra sleep in here. And I just try to veg out. And then Jen will have a to-do list for us and, you know, get that done. And Saturday, Sunday comes along and, you know, I'm just trying to, I'll go for a walk around here and just, you know, try to refresh 
my memory and just kind of, you know, chill. But what I also do is I will sometimes, I will sometimes do what some of you folks do, and that is go onto YouTube and start watching about whatever, you know, find, I'll find something to watch and then I'll go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Does that happen to you? You go down a rabbit hole. Um, I was watching a video of the history of this area, which I love to do. I love to learn about this area's history, which is, you know, 100 years and newer, really. Uh, where I am in Palm Desert, Rancho Mirage area, 50 years and newer is history around here, 60, 70 years, ever since sort of the war. Anyway, uh, I was watching a, a historian talk about famous houses around here, but built by interesting characters. And one house came up, the McCullough House. And I thought, that name, McCullough, sounds familiar to me. And then I realized, looking up this fellow, <laughs> McCullough, he is the guy that started a company producing chainsaws, the McCullough Chainsaw Company. And he produced uh, lawnmowers. He produced outdoor motors for uh, power boats, McCullough outdoor uh, uh, outboard motors, riding mowers, weed whackers, uh, anything to do with a small engine is what this guy was into. In the 60s, late 50s and early 60s, his company was known for producing the McCullough go kart, the racing go kart. Not the one that you pay 10 bucks to go around the lap once or twice at five miles an hour. I'm talking about racing go-karts where you're going 60, 80 miles an hour. You got to wear a helmet. <clears throat> McCullough racing carts that were winning uh, races all over North America. <coughs> um, he discontinued that in, in the early 60s and, and got out of that business because the Japanese were coming in and undercutting his prices. But... Uh, this guy was the king of, of chainsaws. And I started getting video suggestions from YouTube uh, about collectors of chainsaws. There are chainsaw collectors. Who knew? Um, and uh, they collect McCullough chainsaws, like every model ever made by the company, because they made chainsaws for your little cottage out in the woods where you cut three inch wide trees and limbs down then they made chainsaws for you know parks and recreation people then they made chainsaws for loggers like we're talking the big boy chainsaws he made them all uh this guy became a multi-millionaire for engine design he also produced the uh, this uh that's called the supercharger uh mustangs in the 60s had superchargers added to them same with dodges and and uh, and Plymouth cars and GM cars, they had a supercharger, his McCullough supercharger. This guy became a, uh, a very wealthy man, and he built a very phenomenal house in the valley here way back in the day. But he's known for something else that you might know him for. You don't know his name, but you know what he did. In the 1960s, he bought London Bridge from the city of London and brought it to Lake Havasaw in Arizona. The London Bridge in Lake Havasaw, Arizona, is because McCullough bought it for $2.4 million in 68 or 69, I can't remember the year. And piece by piece, stone by stone, they disassembled it and brought it across the Atlantic, through the Panama Canal, up to Long Beach, onto trucks, into Arizona, and reassembled the London Bridge at Lake Havasaw, which is Lake Havasaw's most famous uh, thing to see. It's, it, millions of people have seen the London Bridge in the middle of the desert. This guy bought up thousands of acres of land to make Lake Havasaw what it is. Uh, th this guy became a millionaire many times over again by building and, and producing hotels and subdivisions. He foresaw the future of Lake Havasaw. And the reason he was in Lake Havasaw wasn't because he was necessarily a visionary for the future of that area. He needed a place where he could test his outdoor, uh, his outboard motors 
for the boats, the outboard engines he was producing, the McCullough outboard engines. Because he was competing with Evan Rood and all these other companies for supremacy of the outboard boat market. And he needed a lake where he could do testing and he needed year round conditions. He couldn't do it in the Great Lakes in Ontario or Michigan. He couldn't do it up there. And he was from California. And so he found that Lake Havasa was a place. So he built a factory there to build outboard motors and other items. He employed 400 people there and built the bridge and did development and became even richer. There's a museum to this guy now in Lake Havasa to honor him. He would have been 102 last year if he were still alive. Unbelievable story. I followed this this thing. I just went down this rabbit hole of information about this guy. There, I can't believe there isn't a movie about this guy. Why, why hasn't there been made, a movie been made about this guy? Uh, I would have thought maybe even qual, a real quality book would be written about this gentleman. Phenomenal. Uh, the house he built here in the desert was a one-of-a-kind house. Um, big home in the Thunderbird Country Club with all kinds of gadgets. The house was called the Push Button House, and it had 200 separate motors, electric motors, operated by Push Button to operate all kinds of functions in the house. It was one of the first homes in the valley that had Push Button drapes, uh, close and open, uh, window blinds, uh, would raise or lower the bed in your bedroom so it would make it easier to change the sheets. What? Um, a power operated pantry where the pantry was on shelving and there were 12 shelves that operated by elevator system. They went up or down in a rotation basis. And each shelf, we'd have one shelf of canned food, one shelf of flour and sugar and spices. The next shelf would be your toaster, your, your pancake maker, your whatever. It would be shelf after shelf after shelf of, of pantry items that would hold way more than a pantry you'd walk into. You just stood in front of this thing and hit the button and here comes the next level. What You want anything from this one? Nah, keep going. Hit the button. Here comes the next one. Out of this world. Um, air conditioning systems. This house was built in 55, 56, 57. Um, it had every modern convenience you could imagine because this guy was an inventor. And he was an inventor of items that had electrical motors and gas motors. McCullough. And uh, based in... Um, city of industry in los angeles apparently and he married his girlfriend and his girlfriend's father was the ceo and owner of a company called briggs and stratton you know who those guys are briggs and stratton a lawnmowers baby so this guy married the daughter of briggs and stratton and this guy was an engine builder for lawnmowers. Guess what? Yes, yeah, you got it. And he started using his engines because they were far superior to anything else. Uh, eventually, his entire corporation was acquired by Husqvarna. Do you know who those guys are? The name Husqvarna? Out of Sweden. So Husqvarna took over the private company uh, that, uh, that this gentleman had fascinating story. I, I, so I was looking up the Husqvarna website and they're global and they're massive and they're billions of dollars in sales and thousands of, of, of dealers across the world. And these McCullough chainsaws had dealers all over the United States and Canada and the world deal globally. And this guy sold millions of chainsaws, millions of lawnmowers, weed whackers, um, and on and on. He even invented a gyro helicopter gyroscope helicopter where the above the top blade would spin and give you lift and there would be a blade behind the cockpit of the helicopter to push it he invented that uh this guy was unbelievable it was it just doesn't end it just i i, I know one tenth one twentieth of this guy's life unbelievable anyway there you go stuff that i love to do when i'm when i'm off just to kind of just get off uh, get off the beaten track a little bit Anyway, there you go. Mm, uh, Splare, I have that too with this issue. So this videos about you say they're less than 30 minutes, goes quickly, end up at the next one, then the next. Next thing you know, two hours gone. John, uh, Bruce, uh, when is when you say corning, do you mean corning 
two different companies, uh, Owens Corning or Corning. Oh, um, I think I mean Owens Corning. I think I mean Owens Corning. Not a lurker. 173, good morning, Simpleton, Spiegel, Familia, and uh, Turds. Uh, Corning is, um, uh, let me triple check the Owens Corning. Uh, Owens Corning, O-C is the, is the symbol, O-C. Splayer, uh, J- July 19th, the 24 GameStop, $12 call, bought back at $350, collected $274. Thank you, Markets. Uh, Charlie, maybe they did make a movie about McCullough. Wasn't it titled The Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> uh, Bobby, who would want to watch a movie about motorboating? Um, what a lurker. Uh, who invited Rugman today? Who invited him? Yeah, this the, a movie about this guy, of all the inventions this guy created, and all of the all the different eras, and the story of the London Bridge. Uh, I mean, this guy was called crazy, and then they started calling him crazy like a fox because he owned all the property around the bridge for hotel development, resort development, retail development, smart as a whip. This guy saw the future and went, yeah, yeah, well, we'll put a bridge there. It's on dry land. There's not even a river under it. Let's put a bridge there and then we'll dig a trench and we'll have Lake Havasaw flow through here. We'll have a, we'll have a thing flow through here. And there's, a, there's an island behind us, Lake Havasaw Island. He owned it. He owned a whole bunch of that island. And this guy was so smart. Uh, there, there, there's so many facets to this guy. It's, it's just endless uh, from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s to, to create this worldwide thing. It's kind of like a Howard Hughes kind of a thing in a way, but he's not ex- super eccentric. Although the family said, oh, yeah, grandpa was up to something. Uh, the, the grandkids and the children of this guy would go, he's up. He's go, he just bought the bridge. He just bought a London bridge. I agree. You're not going to believe what grandpa did. <laughs> I love it. I, I think it would be a, a, a neat little story. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I doubt one in a thousand Americans know who this guy is. They know who Husqvarna is now. Uh, most people know Husqvarna, but McCullough, uh, McCullough chainsaws and everything else. You look at ads. There are ads you can watch on Google uh, of Husqvarna chainsaws, and then you take a look at uh, sorry. McCullough chainsaws, and now look at Husqvarna chainsaws. Same thing. It's just, they just put the Husqvarna name on it. They just took the name away, and that's all they did. They just took over the company. Um, there was also a, a, a 1961 film made to promote the uh, go kart division. They were really into it, and they used a young actor in this uh, corporate movie, which was like five or eight minutes long. And this young up and coming comedian actor. Don Knotts. They used Don Knotts to promote this line of go-karts. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Some of them had twin engines. They had two turbo, uh, supercharged uh, uh, McCullough motors behind the driver's seat, one for each wheel with disc brakes. These were serious, really serious machines, and they are collectibles. The, the, these McCullough go-karts are absolute collectibles. People restore them into mint condition and have show and shines. They, they, they show them off like classic cars. This is serious stuff. It's unbelievable. It's, it's just unbelievable. I don't know. Uh, crazy, crazy. One, the Husqvarna brand, Costco sells it, and it's a great brand. I got a pressure washer for the last three years. They now produce electric robot-assisted lawnmowers for golf courses. They program the green cutter to cut the green up and down, back and forth, all programmed on apps off the phone for the for the groundskeeper. It's just, this is a, this business is evolving out to the future. Grass will always be part of our future. Golf courses, um, uh, lawns, uh, uh, corporate campuses that have to be looked after. You just, you just want to make it work um, and you want to make it efficient. And so now they have fleet sales of uh, weed whackers, fleet sales of, of lawnmowers, uh, the, sit, the ones you sit on, the ones you push, and the robotics assistant. This is a big business. This is not a little corner store, strip mall, lawnmower dealer anymore. This, this It's all changed. It's all left behind. Unbelievable. This is awesome, says one. The world has... Uh, in that business has completely turned over into another world entirely. But you had to have the basic beginnings of the business and having um, having a highly efficient and powerful 
tools like lawnmowers and, and everything else to allow the world to become controlled by mankind. Uh, everyone's lawn, uh, gentlemen ranchers, uh, equestrian places, uh, gardens. Uh, it just goes on and on. Husqvarna also sells watering systems for gardens, uh, for private gardens, commercial gardens, uh, hydroponic systems. This is a multi-billion dollar business. It, it, it covers everything. It's really amazing. The, uh, the, the end game of this business is still not done yet. And it all started with inventors and uh, guys who could create this and create that. I mean, look, uh, you know, uh, Hewlett Packard was started in a garage in, in uh, near San Jose, California. Uh, Apple with Steve Jobs and, 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 uh, and uh, his buddy uh, were in, a, in Steve Jobs' parents' garage. I mean, you know, these businesses all started somewhere and became something unrecognizable to the inventors, of course. Uh, Henry Ford, I mean, what did he start? A little, it looked like a bicycle that had a motor on it. I mean, what? Uh, yeah, unbelievable. It, it is truly amazing. And so to, to have this one entrepreneur go all these directions with his, with his inventions and his business ideas and acumen, this guy was ahead of the world, ahead of all of his competitors, ahead of so many contemporaries. But he was eccentric in a way, and he was unique in a way. I, I find it just fascinating. I, I love the life of a real entrepreneur. I, I respect these people who just, they changed the world. They changed the world. Amazon was a bookseller in the garage of Bezos' parents. I think Microsoft went somewhere. Yes, that's exactly right. You're exactly right. Uh, Amazon, of course. Uh, how many businesses like, like Facebook started in a college dorm? Uh, you know, I mean, wh where did it all begin and where is it going? It's incredible. Val Valley, um, uh, number 178, Bruce, uh, thank you, my friend, for being here. Great to have you here. Uh, nice to see you this morning. Welcome, all of you, to the channel, wherever you are. I hope you don't find my rants and raves too boring. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I really enjoy doing, uh, looking at that. I found another home in Palm Springs, California, called the Kaufman House. I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about the Kaufman House until this weekend. Uh, I ran into that, and Jen and I drove to it. We went and drove to the house because you can drive on the street that the house sits on. It's not in a gated community. It's in one of these early communities that is open, just an open community. We drove by this place. There were other cars driving by and looking at this, looking at this house, doing what we were doing. And I thought, my God, I had no idea. This unbelievable house. It's one of the most famous homes in America. I had no idea it was this famous. The guy who had it built, Mr. Kaufman, was a retailer from Pittsburgh who was very successful. And he was the owner of a house that he had built for himself by some guy named Frank Lloyd Wright. About 60 miles out of Pittsburgh, they had a summer home built called Falling Waters. The most famous house in probably the United States held and made for a private person. Falling Waters from Frank Lloyd Wright. That house is a national historical monument. Now, this house here in Palm Springs, he was asking Frank Lloyd Wright, would you build this house for me? I need a house for two months of the year. I need a house for 60 days every year. And I'd like you to build me one in Palm Springs, California. Can you, can you imagine? This is 1948. How much money did this guy have? In 1948, he was thinking of getting Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright to build him a house that he would only use in January and February, but it would need full-time staff the rest of the year on site to maintain it because it's worth a fortune. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright gave him some ideas, but he didn't respond to them, didn't like him, so he hired another guy to do it who was also a famous architect, and he built this house, and it's become an icon, and it was used um, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s has been used for advertising uh, layouts um, for many products. It's, I don't know if it's been used for television or movie sets. I don't know if it's gone that far, but um, this house is an icon. And the latest estimate puts this house at $25 million. It is truly a one-off. You want to know about this house? 
the Kaufman House, K-A-U-P-H-M-A-N. Google it. You'll find uh, videos about this house. Mind-numbing. And the family, the Kaufman family. Oh, my Lord. Rich, the biggest department store in downtown Pittsburgh, took an entire block. That building still makes news on Pittsburgh uh, television all the time. They've converted that old department store, which became a Macy's. Uh, over the years and has now been let go by Macy's and the building has now been sold to developers. They got a hotel in there. They've got apartments in there. It's been completely transformed. It's a story unto itself. It, it, the Kaufman family will spend hours going down that rabbit hole. It's incredible. Just the story. I love entrepreneurial story stories. I really do. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, Charlie, my ex-mother-in-law briefly worked for Steve Jobs assembly computers in his garage. However, she left just before the company exploded. She definitely blew that opportunity. <laughs> what are you going to do? Rocket Labs 495 says, uh, says Splair. Rocket Lab 495. Um, we're looking at the Dow here down 46. So Rocket Lab 496, 497. We're going up. Brian, sounds like I need to invest in a garage if I have any chance of, I, of my kid becoming a millionaire. I got to have a garage. I mean, this kid's got to have something to play with i mean come on <laughs> unbelievable this one guy that i watched this chainsaw collector the guy asked him well how many chainsaws have you got he says well i don't have that big a collection no no i have about 250 that i've restored in mint condition that i'm now opening a museum for and i got about another 250 in the garage in my tool shed garage where I'm, I'm restoring those. But I know guys with 5,000 of these. <laughs> 5,000 chainsaws from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. We're talking diehards. And this, this, uh, these giant chainsaws documented with, with uh, owner's manuals, uh, carrying cases. We're talking you know, not just something ch trashed in the corner somewhere, although some of them have been, re you know, recovered in real bad shape. These things are, are valuable for parts. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's like a Model T, you know. The, from, after the 1960s, you couldn't find Model Ts lying around farmers' fields anymore. They, they'd all been gathered up and been taken into loving hands to be restored or used for parts and all that. Same with auto wreckers. They've been picked clean of the 50s Bel Airs and the Chevys and you know, all the classic cars from the 40s, the 50s. They've been picked clean at all these places. Sooner or later, some of these things become valuable to the eye of the beholder. And there are a bunch of people out there who are really into this McCullough brand uh, history because it doesn't exist anymore. That's the thing, too. Amazing. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> JJ, uh, ex mother in law, uh, probably a good move. That's <laughs> Flair. Can't wait to change rodent pet food system dramatically compared to what it used to be 30 years ago until now. At least most Dejo Jew and Chinchilla fans can't find the right food at the pet store here. Interesting. That's beyond me. Uh, we're down 19 on the Dow. Uh, we're coming up to the two hour mark of this show. Uh, we're down 32 on the SP, down 200 on NASDAQ. We're still uh, on the low end of our, our session here. It's not catastrophically bad. It's just a down dip day, but the Dow's only down seven one hundredths of a percent. It's not leading the way lower. It's the NASDAQ that's leading the way lower, the magnificent seven, the higher falutin stocks that have been dominating the markets. That's where the slippage is happening. I do see Uber down a couple of bucks, Spire down a penny, SoFi down just six cents at 8.30. It's coming on. GameStop still down 66. Rocket Lab up a dime. We're back to five bucks. We're coming back. AI down 164. Spider down 329. Q's 537 lower. Apple down 176. That's a magnificent seven stock. End phase 350 lower. AMD down 970. A A A Adobe down 1450. Netflix down 10 bucks. That's two uh, magnificent seven. Nvidia down 38.97. That's three. Tesla down 733. That's four. Uh, who else is off here? Um, uh, let's see. Google is up 13. They're, they're up. That's number five. 
Uh, let's take a look here. Microsoft down five of that dollars. That's five of six. Magnificent. And uh, Amazon down three dollars. That's six of seven lower on the day. Only the one is higher. And that happens to be Google, 13 cent gain. That's it. So everyone else is down. That's why the Qs are down. That's why S&P is lower. These seven stocks are dominating these indexes. They brought the index lower. Uh, the Dow is only down seven one hundredths of a percent right there. Interesting. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, BP, interesting. Microsoft did not invent a language. MS-DOS was originally 86 DOS developed by Tim Patterson and bought by Microsoft. They also sold basic program language. Not bad marketing, though. Yeah, they knew what they were doing with it. Uh, well, they started with the healthy dog foot five, ten years ago. So I see there's a market for my unusual idea, but I won't explain more. Uh, here for some time. It's okay, Spire. Uh, Spire, I love you, buddy. Um, yeah, NVIDIA down $38 a share. $6.88. Uh, that means uh, those of you who have uh, written uh, uh, credit spreads, you're watching to see if the shares come much closer towards you and how will they react tonight, tomorrow. Um, and also those of you who have not yet done uh, any cash, uh, uh, cash credit spreads, any credit spreads on puts or calls, now you can look at NVIDIA in the 560, 580 area. You could look at it in the 780 to 800 area. I mean, whatever whatever comfort level you have, there's all kinds of stuff to look at. But, you know, everyone wants to, you know, you may want to wait until after earnings are done and then put together a credit spread trade. But you can do that too. Uh, you're looking for shrinkage. You want the market to tell you which direction it's going. That's what you want to know. So there you go. If you wrote a credit spread, credit, a credit call spread um, on uh, 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 NVIDIA last week, you're smiling today. Uh, they're even further out of the money. There's shrinkage there. So whichever way it goes. Um, Palantir down 5%. My covered calls are smiling, says Beach Boy. There you go, my friend. Um, dude, new life goals. Join the 5,000 Chainsaw Club. I know now what to do, Bruce. You've given me direction in my life. Congratulations. Some folks buy and, and collect Camaros. Some people get Mustangs. Some people buy Dodge Chargers and collect them and, and fix them up and show them off at car shows. Then there are those who get Rembrandts and they get Seagulls. Um, they buy... Uh, who knows what? Uh, there are people who buy toasters. Uh, they are toaster collectors. Uh, there are those who are keychain collectors, um, fridge magnet collectors, and then there are McCullough chainsaws and McCullough go karts and McCullough anything. Uh, what can I tell? Just, just saying, it's just out there. Uh, Husqvarna collectors. I'm sure there are Husqvarna collectors. I'm sure there are collectors of Husqvarna chainsaws that were collecting the first year that McCullough changed the name from McCullough to Husqvarna. They were, they were collecting Husqvarna first year or two chainsaws that used to be McCullough chainsaws. I bet you there are those folks. Um, to each his own, there's a passion for all of you. Some of folks who are here love writing stock options and making money. That's what they do, and uh, they do it rather well. And I say welcome to the party, kids. Great to have you here. Thank you again for hitting the thumbs up meter for us today to get us through a higher level. We had 167 a while ago. Now we're at 182 thumbs ups. Thank you very, very, very much. Appreciate that. Giddy up, everybody. Uh, welcome to the party. Getting smarter and getting richer all the time. Just make sure that you hit the thumbs up button. Do not get caught red-handed by this guy. You don't want this guy to find you in the hallway where you did not give us a thumbs up because this guy will hand out the pink slip to you. He never had hair. And don't uh, run into this guy in the cafeteria. He tells really stupid jokes. Uh, uh, he's a bit of a doofus, but he'll, he'll beat you up if you look at him kind of funny. So welcome to the party, everybody. It's great to have you here. Don't forget, if you're just a savior or you're a crusader trying to make money and, and get ahead in the world, do not make these guys angry at you by ignoring them. Make sure to honor them the Knights of Neat 
uh, you must absolutely, if, if there's one thing you got to do, just one thing, do not make these guys angry. I'm warning you, I'm telling you, it is just not worth it. You've got to honor the Knights of uh, or or else. Um, there you go. Uh, you've been forewarned. Uh, I'm putting out my alerts right now. The knee emoji attack is underway, everybody. Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce lights up when talking chainsaws. Uh, Melvin is here with the knee emojis. D.H. Ruda, Splare, knee, 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 knee. Here come the knee emojis. You guys know, do not mess with the Knights of Knee and uh, ignore them. They will come back to bite you. You don't want that. Absolutely uh, be there and honor the Knights of Knee. Thank you all so much for being part of this channel. Throwing the thumbs ups out there, uh, giving us a little momentum on the thumbs up meter. It is fabulous. We're now shooting 184 and counting on the thumbs ups meter. TJ is here with the knee emojis. Uh, thank you, TJ, very much. Uh, well done, TJ. Uh, just a smart thing to do. David Duff knows what we're talking about. David doesn't mess around. Same with the deep value of the options. Neat, 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 neat. There they come. Don't forget, open your window wherever you are. Yell at the top of your lungs. Neat, neat, neat. Uh, Juan knows what we're talking about. Bama Babe knows what we're talking about. Has for years. Neat, neat, neat. Emojis are out there. This is the only channel that knows what they're doing. All these other channels who don't put out knee emojis are just asking for trouble. Splare knows exactly what kind of trouble they're getting themselves into. It's not good. Uh, they're losing money left, right, and center. Markets go down, they lose money. Uh, we make money here no matter what direction this market goes. Parker Ivy knows exactly. Neat, neat, neat. Batman, neat, neat, neat. Savage Wall Street, neat, 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 neat. Here come the heart emojis. Here they come. Stephen Butler, neat, 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 neat. There we go, kids. They're just coming in. All kinds of emojis and uh, reaction. Thank you, everybody. BP, neat, 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 neat. That's it right there. Don't mess with these people. They know what they're talking about. Uncle Bruce, what class covers arm folding? Uh, I believe that is a stage I'm at right now. Brian wants to know. Right on, Brian. Fold your arms and watch the money roll in, baby. Brian's going, neat, 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 neat. That's the first thing you do. Uh, then you fold your arms. Absolutely. Write your options. Say hello to the Knights of Knee. Honor them and then fold your arms. Do not upset the Knights of oh, Knee. Absolutely not. Thank you all for being here today. It's great to see you. Great having you here. 184 thumbs ups as they keep trickling in. Trying to get desperately to 200 thumbs ups. Thank you all so much for helping out. Um, look at those AI July $32.5 calls I wrote last week. Looking lovely. I'm already up 35% on these things. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know why he works. Uh, why, why do you even work anymore? I don't get it. Yeah. Well done, my friend. Taking in the dough. Um, thank you all so very much, they say. Easy money. Very nice. Um, Splare, uh, Brian, look out for a YouTube uh, rabbit hole with non-financial topics. Watch out. <laughs> Long weekends, man. Give me some time off, and I can turn turn the power off a little bit. But I can then fantasize about these people uh, becoming multimillionaires, following a dream, and going after a, a plan, executing a plan. And when they're in their late 30s and in mid 40s, now having millions and millions of dollars at a time where millions of dollars were just unthinkable for most people. And uh, uh, hanging out in a neighborhood like Thunderbird Country Club, building a house that uh, fits right in with everyone else around you. This is a, the, the Hollywood royalty uh, financiers. Um, Firestone had a house just over there. President Ford ended up with a house over there. Uh, Phil Harris was here. Lucille Ball was over there. And you've got your house right smack dab in the middle of these folks where you belong. Just, just unbelievable. That would be unreal for the 50s. Unreal. Of course, Ford didn't have his house until a much later in time, but the Firestones built their place in the late 50s, 60s. Unbelievable. Yes, this, this area has history like you cannot believe uh, from some of the most successful people on the, out of the United States and Canada. It's just stunning the, uh, the kind of money that's here, the money that came here in the 50s and the 60s until this very day. It is stunning. 
Amazing. Uh, Savage of Wall Street trying to sell some Tesla 180 cash secured puts right now. But my super stink is just not triggering yet. Come on, baby. Go down five bucks more. Tesla, don't want to buy in too high here. Uh, Brian, my missus uh, and I got a hotel for Saturday night for Valentine's Day. Grandma watched the kids. We did nothing. It was absolutely wonderful. We watched lots of home reno shows and engaged, exchanged presents. Beautiful, beautiful. Brian got a takeout. Didn't have to leave the room. I wish I could do that every weekend. Oh, yes. When you're empty nesters, you're, you're given a reprieve from time to time, but then those grandkids show up. <laughs> Oh, my. Uh, the Dow off 43 points at the moment. Um, we're down 39 on NVIDIA at 687. We're down 35 on S&P. We're down 227 on NASDAQ right now. Uh, what else is going on here? Down 34 cents on oil at 78.85. Oil is, is weakening just a little bit. Interesting stuff. BP, ah, uh, no, got to... I got to go to work now. Oh, no. When can I give up my job? I don't know, BP. I don't know why you're still doing it. But uh, just keep working it, man. It'll happen. It's coming your way, I'm sure. Spire's up four, by the way. 11.78. It's gone up four cents. Uh, Uber down 194. SoFi down 12. GameStop still off to 13.44, down 68. Uh, Rocket Lab is up four cents. Hanging on. AI down two bucks. Spiders are down 350 to 496. Q's at 424.85, down 572. Apple down 219. Enphase down 447. AMD down 1020. Adobe down 1448. Uh, Netflix down 1136. Nvidia down $40 a share to 685. Tesla down 845 at 191.50. Matterport down 6.5 cents. Smart Rent down 1.3 cents. Uh, Owens Corning, the OC down 117, um, ATIP up 21 cents, Unity down 203, Google up 20, Moderna down 8, Cisco down a penny, Pfizer up 30 cents, IBM down 196, HBQ down 2, Microsoft down 523 to 398, 83, um, Amazon down 289, Home Depot 218, Vanek Semiconductors down 6 bucks, Goldman down 82 cents, Boeing is down 6 cents. Meta, the Facebook shares down 568. The high on Meta uh, for the 52 week uh, range is uh, 488, and we're at 467. We've given up $21 from the high on Facebook in, in the week. Um, Target uh, down uh, up a dollar 24 for Target. Uh, JP Morgan up a buck, Costco up 560, Walmart up uh, 713 a share. Uh, Disney down 167, American Airlines down a penny, AMC down 25 cents, DraftKings down 319, Royal Caribbean down 266 to 113.43. The high for Royal Caribbean, 52 week high, 133. An idiot paid 20 bucks more for this stuff, and it's not worth 113 at all. Amazing, isn't that amazing? How options work and how the markets fluctuate. Unreal. Hector, neat, 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 neat. Brian, my GameStop, Jan 2025, $18 covered calls. They're now 246 bid. I sold them for 538 Keep coming to Papa. I want to buy back around the buck, Mark. I'm, I'm interested in buying it a dollar. So there you go. Uh, the GameStop shares, 1349 uh, These are out of the money now. A uh, ton. And they're still 246 bid, but they are slipping. And each day, each week, uh, slippage continues, and you've pulled in some money. Giddy up. Those of you who've written $15 calls on GameStop, uh, those of you who've written 14s, 16s, 18s, down we go. It, that's what it's all about. Now, the question is, is it time to write cash-secured puts on GameStop? Is it, is it time to buy deep-in-the-money calls at 5, 6, 7 GameStop? Can you get them cheap? And write calls against those for nice returns. That's what this option market is all about. You don't have to own GameStop to write GameStop. Savage of Wall Street, Uncle Bruce Matterport has earnings today. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't. I don't know. My hope. My hope is that they uh, beat ex expectations. Uh, I'm kind of expecting that. That seems to be the pattern they have. But. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. What, what is their outlook? Are they going to, are they going to recommend? Are they going to come out and say, 
that later this year we start making money like we are about to break even and now make profits every quarter is that about to happen for matterport i'm crossing my fingers i'm hoping that's coming their way i don't know i don't know uh spare i have some now i have now luckily some extra time they fired me two weeks of firing time and due to the reason i had no vacation i received a half month full with paid vacation time well this is great square this is great perfect perfect yeah baby um yeah man taking the dough and uh, tomorrow already i introduce myself to a new job next to me 15 minute walk i'm gonna go and check on another one splare you're doing it right that's the way buddy that is the way take the dough grab another gig keep trading grow your account yeah baby you're not going to be working much longer. Uh, coming to the point where you're going to be trading, you're just going to be living off your trades. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I love that. Uh, Bobby, a smart friend, had some bad press. Major investor doesn't like them being quiet. Wants to know the plan for improving the SP. Interesting. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, well, you, know, you never know. Uh, smart rent at 288, uh, up two pennies. Matterport down six at 241 on Matterport. So there you go. Uh, what can I say? Um, you know, there will come a time where these two stocks will be in the 20s and 30s. And some of you will still be here. You will still be here going, yeah, I just toughed it. I kept averaging down on it because I knew their, their quarterly numbers kept going up every quarter. It's kept Their sales kept going higher, higher, higher. It's only a matter of time that they start making money and make more money. And make more, and the stock will reach six, eight, twelve, eighteen, twenty-five. It's only a matter of time. It's true. SoFi, Smart Rent, Matterport, Rocket Lab. There's a handful right there. Yeah, I think so too, says Splair. Uh, but it's still taking a little time. It's all good, my friend. You're gonna be fine. This is this is okay. Um, these gigs that you you know they'd let you go on. These aren't careers. Uh, these are just jobs you're just you're just doing what you need to do to take care of yourself and you're growing this account and you're working you know you're working these these trades and you're building your your expertise and you're just you're going to become self-employed there's going to be a point where you won't need any job from anybody it's coming it is really coming flint uh i'm here what did i miss absolutely nothing Flint, it's all good. Uh, we were talking McCullough Chainsaws today. Oh, did you miss? You did miss something. McCullough Chainsaws. Lake Havasaw and the London Bridge. You missed all that. You missed all kinds of talk about Husqvarna. I see that, she said. I, I see this. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my. I'm going to back up and watch. I'll catch up. I'll catch up with you guys. Don't worry about it. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been hour, two hours and 11 minutes on the air now. I love the fact that you've been with me again today, as you always are. It's a pleasure to be with you. I hope you have found it somewhat entertaining um, and uh, informative. Uh, you're a little smarter today than uh, maybe this morning and a little more knowledgeable about the markets. I note that the Dow is only down nine points. It's coming back on. Um, we'll see how this market wants to you know, play the rest of the day. Um, Nvidia down to 685. It will bottom out. It got to 970, 679. Maybe that was the low of the day. I don't know. We got the Dow. Uh, like I say, we're right now about 17, 18 points lower. There's volatility here. There's no doubt about that. S and P down 32.9. Nasdaq down 209. That's the one taking the biggest hit. We're down 32 cents on a barrel of oil out of Texas. Uh, thank you all uh, very much. Flint Creek, I had breakfast with a friend, talked about Uncle Bruce and my friendships forming here, right on Flint Creek Square. Hopefully, GameStop's not staying for the rest of the week below 14. It looks sad over there. Um, well, we'll see. Their numbers are coming up two weeks. So what happens with GameStop shares in the next uh, couple of weeks? Will the shares begin to inch up a little bit as we get closer to earnings? Because if GameStop comes out with their latest quarter, which was Christmas, and reveals that they made up pile of money during Christmas to make the entire year a profitable year, nicely profitable, shares could pop the 20. Could. Could. I'm not saying it'll do it, but it could. We'll find out. Um, anyway, there you go. We'll see what's going on. Um, 
Spire's up 11 cents, 11.85. Rocket Lab up 10 and a half, trying to get back over five. How about that? And we're going down seven on SoFi, 8.28 now on your SoFi. The volume on the day here, uh, 10.8, 10.9 million at this moment in time. So uh, GameStop, 13.53, down 59 cents. It's actually bounced up from 13.42 on 1.1 million. So we got a little bit of volume coming on GameStop. Maybe there's some bargain hunting coming in now. Rocket Lab, 4.99 um, on a volume of 2.7 million shares. It's just being gobbled up, I think. That's what I think is going on over there. All right. The Qs are down five. The Spiders are down three. Uh, congratulations, option rollovers, uh, rollover option writers, and everybody else. Way to go, kids. Keep the Donero coming in. Make yourself some dough. Take advantage of these silly option gamblers. And away we go. Thank you all for, for being here. They say still a month away, Bruce. Uh, Google says March 19th for earnings. I guess I'm just, I just can't wait. Uh, I just can't wait. Uh, I have now three calls to write, so a little pop would be a good thing. There you go. Right, right, right on, guys. Well, we'll see what happens on the on the GameStop. We'll be here for that. Uh, SoFi 829 looks like it wants to go higher. Giddy up, everybody. Make a bunch of money. The Dow just went green. Uh, there you go. It just, it just went green. Let's see if the market wants to take a shot with it. Thank you all for your support of this uh, YouTuber. I appreciate you. Brian, GameStop, uh, January 2025, put $15 strike. Ask five bucks for a $15 um, put contract. That's a, That would be a nice write if you could get that kind of money. Spare. Ah, there's another sad message. March 19th, still away. we got a ways away. Yeah, ca uh, cash secured puts on GameStop could be a real opportunity. You might be able to write 15s, 14s. 13s, 12s, 50s, 12s, check them out. Maybe there's some real opportunities to bring some nice cash on your GameStop potential here. Um, hey, the stock pops to 1618 and those puts are worthless. Like worthless? You're laughing, baby. You don't even own the stock. Um, there's a possibility. All right, kids, have a good one. Um, we'll see you here uh, tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Uh, don't forget, uh, Brian, Rocket Lab, 499, Splayer, and at that low, it's really an opportunity. Thank you all. Uh, have a great day today. Get richer, okay? Keep me posted. We'll keep you posted, and we'll get together with you for one-on-ones whenever you're ready. And uh, any questions on classes, you let me know. Uh, Marcus, largest NVIDIA option volume for... Um, February 23rd, 1,300 calls with a 12,000 volume. 1,300 calls with 12,000 volume. Uh, interesting. Marcus, uh, neat, 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 neat. There you go. Have a good one, everybody. That's it. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye for now.